What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and lately there's been a weird release of film trailers that all have this very, how do I put this, well let's just say politically charged feeling to it. So in this video I want to speak on how Hollywood is seemingly preparing a bunch of films that aim to feel more like propaganda than anything else, and how they all seem to be coming out around the next election year as well. These weird films range from Alex Garland's Civil War, the recently released Leave the World Behind on Netflix, and of course, the eyebrowing raising film titled The American Society of Magical Negroes. That last one, by the way, is actually just funny to me. But it has a lot of people asking questions whether the film is racist or not. Which, in a way, yes, but it's also playing on a trope within cinema already. The American Society of Magical Negroes plays on a stereotype within films where a character, who was almost always a minority, ends up being used storyline-wise to guide the white main character on a journey. A good example of this trope would be Michael Clark Duncan in The Green Mile, who plays John Coffey. And his character is the soul of that film, but his presence exists within to guide Tom Hanks' character Paul Edgecombe on an emotional journey. Sometimes it's more on the nose with films like Bruce Almighty, where Morgan Freeman just outright plays God. And that one doesn't really need much explanation. I mean, he's literally God, so he's omnipotent and exists within the confines of the movie to guide Jim Carrey's character throughout. That term, by the way, Magical Negro, it was coined by director Spike Lee, who has also made quite a few films where he targets the racial tensions of the past with stuff like Black Klansmen, for example. In the American Society of Magical Negroes, however, that film looks to be one part satire comedy, and another a cleverly designed jab at white people in general, who, as you likely know, have become the world's punching bags when it comes to racist remarks. The whole concept of this movie surrounds the idea of a secret society of black people who simply exist to keep the white race happy. There's even a literal meter these magical black people can see which tells them how far a white person's emotions are that is explicitly labeled white tears. Whatever nuance the film has, at least from what I can tell anyway, feels like it's lost as his trailer basically commits the cardinal sin. Which is that it tells the entire plot of the movie pretty much, and makes it almost pointless to watch since we all know what's going to happen. The main character's name is Aaron, and he's played by Justice Smith. And it's extra eye-rolling when you realize that Justice Smith just looks like a self-insert for the writer and director of this film, whose name is Kobe Libby. It's no surprise that this movie, like many other modern-day projects, is yet another piece of media made with a self-insertion at the center of its story. Unfortunately, once I saw the trailer for this movie, I didn't really feel anything for it besides rolling my eyes, and seeing yet another on-the-nose circle jerk against the white demographic. Especially when one of the characters in the trailer says that white people are the most dangerous predators on the planet. It's the most dangerous animal on the planet. Sure. White people, when they feel uncomfortable. Hey, I remember when movies made me feel things. Movies still make me feel things. I feel regret most of the time. <laughs> Any semblance of nuance or clever writing kind of goes out the window immediately. As I can already tell, this will be one of those flicks where people will either accept it with open arms as they express their white guilt, and those who reject it will be labeled racist because of the usual isms and phobic nonsense these Hollywood types like to throw around when things don't go the way they want it to. The film likely won't do very well, but it's hilarious seeing people's reactions on Twitter to it, and more specifically that of other black people who watch the trailer. Like this one user who said, Can black filmmakers come together for a town hall real quick? Please, we have to talk. And this other comment that says, Ambiguously biracial looking black man risks all of black humanity because he fell for a white woman is certainly a plot choice. I mean, she's out of line, but she's right. It's no surprise that the Hollywood of today is very hungry for things that are both anti-white and racially charged. It's like a weird kink-shaming thing where woke white people froth at the mouth when it comes to these sorts of projects. It's like how I explained last week with Doctor Who's new specials and how that show has a very anti-white, anti-man slant. Even though it's made and produced by a team of white people and people like Russell T. Davis at the center of it. It's like you have these oftentimes woke white leftist creators who think if they pander and denounce their own skin color, that somehow it'll make them a better person, but it just comes off as pathetic and weirdly creepy at best. There's nothing wrong with making fun of people per se, but this magical movie of nonsense is clearly being created in order to score points by pandering. 
and it's the kind of film that will cleverly hide its shortcomings behind the guise of identity politics. And by doing so, the American society of magical negroes will conveniently shield itself from any criticism by using get out of jail free cards by throwing its predominantly black cast in front of it. And this will, no doubt, lead to good reviews even if people don't actually like it. Cause like always, especially these days, the woke white Hollywood person will get on their knees and cry Black Lives Matter as long as it means they will get exclusive access to the next press release or goodies bag. These people's opinions and virtues are about as solid as a fart in the wind, and that's being generous. White people feeling uncomfortable precedes a lot of bad stuff for us. That's why we fight white discomfort every day. Because the happier they are, the safer we are. At the very least, the movie does tackle a movie concept that does exist, and we can't deny that. The magical black person plot device is something within cinema. Beyond the examples I've already given you, you could also see characters like... Rufus, played by Chris Rock in Dogma, to be another good example of this. And technically, while not magical per se, but Lawrence Fishburne as Morpheus in The Matrix does also fit this stereotype as well. Since while he is his own character, you could stretch the concept and say his existence is to lead Keanu Reeves' Neo on a journey, in a magical black person kind of way. Or, if you want some more recent examples, you could say Mahershala Ali in The Green Book is a more modern version of this trope. And another that's really on the nose is Will Smith when he played the genie in Aladdin, but I mean, he's a genie, but technically it still tracks. Regardless, the trailer has made a lot of people raise eyebrows, and for good reason. I mean, without the context of the actual trailer, a lot of people thought this was going to be a black Harry Potter where black people fight dragons with magic. But instead, it's somehow way lamer than that, and once the trailer goes into the romantic comedy angle, that's when I knew this movie was dead in the water for me anyway. And it's extra hilarious to me that of all the people Kobe Libby could make his self-insert main character fall in love with, in his movie that's titled Magical Negroes, he still makes his main character fall in love with a white woman. Which might be another jab at stereotypes, but by god is it on the nose. I do love how things like this have actually made people tell of themselves, like this one user who said, This is actually disgusting, a movie about making the most destructive people on earth comfortable, then falling in love with one in spite of our own best interest. These sorts of comments make me laugh because it's so obvious that they don't know what they're talking about. And it's even more telling when I juxtapose this film to something more recently released, like Netflix's Leave the World Behind where there's a scene where two black characters lay in bed amidst a massive cyber attack on the United States, and their first promise to each other is to be wary of white people. I'm asking for you to remember that if the world falls apart, trust should not be dulled out easily to anyone, especially white people. Which makes me shake my head, because the irony is just off the charts. As you have two black people laying in a bed within a country where they're speaking English and the premise of the movie is that they can't access technology, like internet or phones which they rely on heavily in order to live their very comfortable modern lives. Yet they also conveniently forget and refuse to acknowledge that things like the internet were founded by white inventors. The privilege and lack of awareness of these movies is off the charts for me, since the internet as we know it today was founded by people like Bob Kahn, a white American electrical engineer, who worked alongside Vinton Cerf, another American programmer who is also a white man. Then of course, the internet wouldn't work unless someone discovered how to harness the power of electricity in order to power the entire world. Which you can thank Nikola Tesla for, and yes, Elon Musk named his company after Tesla as well. Yet movies like Leave the World Behind and This Magical Nonsense will try to act like white people are somehow the devil and the root cause of all evil, while they use things that were founded by and even use languages like English that were developed by white people as well. Look, you're allowed to have your opinions, but can we at least stop this constant hate towards the white people of the world? It's not only tiring, it's dishonest and really disrespectful. And we all know if this Magical Society movie, for example, was made with the reverse of races, it would immediately be considered racist. Especially if a secret society of white people had to ensure black people tears were within acceptable levels. I always find it interesting how when it comes to the racism of today, it's so openly accepted to be outspoken and against white people. As it's not only racist, it's very damaging. I don't think we should be attacking anyone for their color of skin, but instead we should be judging people based on the contents of their character. 
the fact there's entire generations of people being born that are being taught nonsense like you shouldn't like people because of their skin color is insane to me. As someone who's part white and Middle Eastern myself, it's, well, it's aggravating. Human beings are more than the color of their skin. We are not confined by our ethnicities or nationalities. Yet every day it seems like we keep devolving and reducing ourselves willingly into these segregated groups on purpose. I don't want movies or media to exist that vilifies white people as much as I don't want movies to exist where black people are the enemy. The cultural divide of not only America but the world at large is manufactured and instilled by the propaganda we as human beings consume and adhere to. And when it's not race, it then comes down to nonsense like political leanings and whether you support the left or right wings of politics. Another new film coming out is Civil War from Alex Garland, which may be the most on-the-nose us versus them film in a while. That flick, based on its trailer, tells the story of a divided America where states have rejected the unification of America, and instead through political leanings and ideologies placed themselves within different nations that were once united. A real-world example of what Alex Garland's Civil War is trying to convey here is the ruination of former Yugoslavia, which, as a Serbian man myself, it hits close to home. A quick history lesson for those unaware, because let's be real, American and Canadian public schools don't teach you anything these days anyway, but I digress. Yugoslavia was once a united nation of six different parts, from Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Slovenia, Montenegro, and Macedonia. They formed following World War I, but during the very brutal and grisly events of World War II, Yugoslavia was torn apart through civil and political infighting. So what Alex Garland is doing here with his Civil War movie is supposed to, yes, tie into the political cultural shifts within our modern world, but it also pulls real-world examples from things like the Yugoslav Wars. I bet a bunch of you just learned something new today since, like I said, you don't learn shit today in today's schools. All you learn is how to line dance, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, and Hitler's bad. And I guess you can include infinite amounts of genders when it comes to today's schools too. But a lot of the nonsense coming out of Hollywood these days adheres to this very real concept of us versus them, conservative versus liberal, white versus black mentality. A lot of media today, especially when it comes to the news, is designed to install separation instead of coexistence. Because of course, whether people like to admit it or not, it's easier to control people when they are separated from a more healthy and stable foundation or populace. And that's also why things like the mind virus known as wokeness is so prevalent in today's society. It targets weak-minded individuals who oftentimes come from families without a strong foundation. And when these people who oftentimes come from single-parent households or lack father figures in general, they find community or purpose within these institutions that use propaganda and buzzwords like race or gender in order to rewrite the critical thinking parts of their brains. And that's how you end up with legions of children that are being raised under the mentalities of victimhood mindsets. And it's why films like these exist, the American Society of Magical Negroes in particular is named that on purpose because the name alone will trigger people immediately and then the support of the movie is then divided into whether you're someone who will accept the film and its messaging. And when it comes to white people, these sorts of films are then designed to further divide groups even more, into whether you are going to accept this movie and support it so you get put into the not all white people are bad category, or will you reject this movie and then get put into the all white people are bad bucket instead. A lot of what's being made today is preying on your psyche from socio-political angles and that's why channels like mine exist. Sure, I talk about stupid stuff here and there, but every once in a while I like to get serious and drop some knowledge on people who are willing to listen as well. But it's important to keep yourself culturally aware of what's going on since a lot of the times these weirdo activists will find new ways to phase through barriers in order to deliver messaging to you. TV shows especially do this very often, and when people push back or become skeptical, they're instead labeled racist for not accepting the sludge. Take for example Doctor Who, where its newest lead actor Nukti Gatwa just flat out says fans better accept him or else. Gatwa said the Doctor has always walked into unknown situations and taken charge with authority. Historically, there's only really one demographic of people that are able to do that and it's certainly not a woman and it's certainly not someone black. Thank God things are changing. And like God while playing the Doctor or the Magical Black People movie and Alex Garland's Civil War, and that stupid Netflix film that's produced by the Obamas of all people, a lot of the times they present their vulnerabilities and racism on their sleeve. And when it's not accepted, they will always circle back behind whatever convenient shields they have in order to avoid criticism. 
it's not necessarily always that audiences are not receptive to the identity political agenda of today's media, but instead that they are just tired of it, and I think when the average viewer looks at that title and reads The Magical Society of Magical Negroes, and sees the trailer with the whole white tears thing, this movie will suffer the same fate as many others before it. People will just ignore it, walk away, and reject it. Because thanks to the culture war, customers have become far more socially aware of when and how these companies go about talking down to them. And I think I can speak for all of us when I say we're tired and I will not be supporting this movie or Civil War or whatever other nonsense comes our way. It's also hilarious that in Alex Garland's Civil War, apparently Texas and California are united? In what world would the most neoliberal state have anything in common with Texas? It's more realistic that there's a society of magical black people than a reality where Texans want anything to do with Californians. Putting those two together is like oil and water, but I guess we'll have to see how Alex Garland justifies that one. And it'll be interesting to see how Kobe Libby's self-inserting magical anti-white person movie does in theaters. I'm sure the critics will love it, but the critics are mostly shills these days anyway, so who cares? And it's not like the normalization of white racism hasn't become mainstream as of late anyway. Look how people are currently outraged over Boston's first Asian mayor, Michelle Wu, who openly celebrated having a dinner party at her house with elected officials that explicitly stated in the post that it was for non-white people only. How is that okay? And yet we know this won't lead to this mayor getting fired. But if she was white and had the same party excluding people of color, we all know the news surrounding this would be nuclear. The rise of woke identity politics has turned many would-be sensible rational thinking adults into lurching idiots with brain rot. We shouldn't be segregating each other based on race, especially within places like Canada or America. And yet these practices keep happening regardless, whether it's within the confines of entertainment, politics or more, we need to stop doing this. And it's insane that we have articles like this one that released in 2021 titled, Whiteness is a Pandemic, where its writer Damon Young said, and I quote, Whiteness is a public health crisis. It shortens life expectancies, it pollutes air, it constricts equilibrium. It devastates forests, it melts ice caps, it sparks and funds wars. It flattens dialects, it infests consciousness, and it kills people. White people, and the people who are not white, my mom included. There will be people who die in 2050 because of white supremacy-induced decisions from 1850. The line doesn't stop there, though. It extends back 400 years and has tentacles clawing everywhere white supremacy exists. Here in America, which is everywhere. White supremacy is a virus that, like other viruses, will not die until there are no bodies left for it to infect. Which means the only way to stop it is to locate it, isolate it, extract it, and kill it. I guess a vaccine could work too, but we've had 400 years to develop one, so I won't hold my breath. End quote. I'm honestly speechless at how rampantly, openly racist some people can be. But this is what's considered normal now. There are people advocating to ethnically cleanse white people from the world like this Damon Young. And this article is still up, by the way, and it's still monetized, and Damon is still employed. If that's not privilege, then I don't know what is. This is insane, and the fact the movies made today to the institutions raising children have all echoed the same nonsense, it worries me greatly. Racism should be left in the past, but for the woke weirdos out there, it has become a part of their every day. And they are unable to see or differentiate between identity or race without a racist lens. Movies, like the ones I explained, will not help us, they will only divide us even more. And I think the only way to hopefully stop this is by not supporting these things. So vote with your wallet and stand up, because racism is not okay in any form and it must end. This is beyond disgusting at this rate. Anyway, thank you for watching, like, subscribe, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Thanks to my patrons as always, let me know what you think as well and have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.